2011 end, I came back to India uh, with a big dream of putting India on map for design. So why India on map for design? Because um, while working in New Zealand and Australia, right, um, uh, we used to outsource a lot of development work, uh, software development work to India. So when I asked my boss about why don't you look at outsourcing design to India, he, his first uh, answer was like, I don't think so India is ready for design. So that was one of the reasons. Another reason is I failed to build a career in India as a designer because back in 90s, right, during the dial-up days, uh, there was no opportunity for designers. So basically people used to build software and in the end they used to call a designer to put lipstick on the pig. As simple as that. So we were more like um, a, an artist who was meant for uh, decorating the software. So like making a fancy buttons or a fancy banners and all this stuff. So I left India. Then I went to New Zealand. I built a great career there. I worked for one of the best brands. I, um, I was heading the digital department at Ogilvy and TBWA. TBWA is a very well-known global agency where Steve Jobs had given all the Apple work to them. And I was, for a small time, very little time, I was handling the brand. And uh, then I decided that uh, digital is like a very beautiful and a big canvas and we can paint crazy things. So here I am. Um, I don't know if you guys know about Lollipop. Lollipop is a research-driven design studio. So headquarters in Bangalore. Today we have five centers. Um, Bangalore, Mumbai, Chennai, Dubai, Vietnam, and I was supposed to open in San Jose this month. We postponed it to whenever it is, whenever uh, things will calm down, we're going to, I'm going to fly and uh, open that. So, um, we are a team of 150 plus designers. And um, for us, uh, what we believe is um, to, to celebrate design every day at our studio. Every single day we celebrate design. So in the span of 23 years of my career as a designer, entrepreneur, artist or whatever, I've come across so many resumes. I've helped an organization to build a design team and also my own company called Olipop. We have close to 150 people and uh, I have scanned like thousands of resumes and portfolio. And I've learned something. I have some tips to give and I'm going to be very blunt. And uh, please don't get me wrong. Um, I don't know how to sugarcoat presentations. Uh, it'll be straight on the face. And uh, let's, after the presentation, right, ask me questions. Because I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions, especially when you're finishing college. How do you get into a studio like ours? Or how do you um, um, uh, score a good job and all this stuff? Okay, let's have, uh, the, I'll quickly run through the presentation. Then after that, it's all questions and answers. Okay, I'll switch to the presentation now. Cool. Uh, a short description. I'm an artist by art, designer by soul, and entrepreneur by choice. So what's a good portfolio? So why do we, we designers need a portfolio? Uh, we need portfolio to score a dream job and build a good design network and inspire other designers. That is what my portfolio has done. I've just... Um, Pulled my website down, um, redesigning my website, but very soon by in end of this week, I'll have my website live. But since I started my career until now, I always had a website. That's where I showed off my portfolio. That's where I scored uh, good jobs. So this was my first resume. I don't have a visual, but um, I don't have a photograph. Back in 1999, uh, sorry, 2000, early 2000, my first resume was in New Zealand. New Zealand is known for wine, so I bought a cheap red wine and I peeled the label off and I designed my resume and I put it across, which looked like a wine label. So in where in place where you have alcohol percentage and all that, I had my experience written there and also I sent a short note to the company saying that if you like my resume, we'll have this wine together. If you don't like it, take it home and have it alone. So something like that. I don't remember the words, but I took a help of a good friend who was a good copywriter and. Um, I designed this and I sent it to um, a creative head of Ogilvy called Greg. I put it on his table and uh, that's it. That's the last thing I remember. Within two hours, I got a call from Greg saying that you're appointed. So this was my first resume. So for me, I think different. I hate PDFs. Though PDFs are required for the record purpose, but I always think of what is the best way to present my resume. So this was one kick-ass resume that I did. And um, at Lollipop, right, um, 
few people have sent resumes man i have literally fallen on the floor looking at those resumes and what amazing they have made short movies they have and crafted few things and um, they have sent books uh, these are the things that get our attention so my first portfolio was this book i printed this book i made seven copies of this book and i sent it across and uh, everybody fell in love with this book this was my first portfolio can you see this is it clear this is almost 20 years old now so this is the book i sent it opens like this with my details and my work it's in a bad shape but still i've maintained it some of my work poster design none of these are real work these are the concept work these are the brief that i wrote for myself and i created a design out of it the poster i created for new zealand music festival some typography experiments this is early 2000 and some package design and again few typography experiments I had i'm a typo free so um, i for me even now i experiment with uh, typography if you follow me on my link on my instagram right there's almost every 2 3 days i keep posting things so this was exhibited in new zealand typography festival is it clear or should i come closer to the camera Yeah, it's clear. It's clear. Okay, from the logos that I designed, and the websites, okay. This illustration in nineteen ninety seven, I won India's best illustration award. this i painted using uh, acrylic colors and the uh, airbrush this was another illustration that i won an award for this this is what got me a job this and that wine label got me a job then apart from that i had cvs like this really small ones tiny ones so this is my this was my resume then So in the eight years of lollipop, right, running lollipop, um, I've come across close to two thousand. I've just made this number up, but I think it's more than two thousand. Um, um, close to two thousand portfolio and resumes, and uh, interviewed close to five hundred people, and only one hundred and forty people got selected. Uh, the reason is, people are not serious about their portfolio. Okay, they're not serious about their resume. They don't know what is portfolio. Portfolio is like a trump card. Okay, that's the one which is going to get you your dream job. so the kind of portfolios that i see right they are um like this resume is these days they say i'm a creative and a passionate designer guys avoid all this stuff okay these is we are sick of these kind of things i'm a team player i'm a fast learner i'm a, and don't put quotes of steve jobs and other uh, design um, mentors and stuff and please do not measure yourself all these graphs that we see right that photoshop i know so much creative thinking i'm good at this i'm sketch i can do sketch i can do 3d and all this stuff don't measure yourself so if you want to measure yourself right put some data around it tell us how much of photoshop do you know show the photoshop works okay please avoid all this stuff especially at lollipop when we see this kind of portfolios right or if you see this kind of resume i safely and securely save it here okay and uh, this screen what gets our attention is a custom design websites okay custom design websites right is what a designer can really showcase his talent so we have pdfs which is okay and then behance and dribble i'll tell you the downside of behance and dribble they are a great pl platform to put your work and you should definitely have your work there for connecting with the entire design ecosystem and there are other uh, website templates where it's like a diy you can build your own uh, single page template or double page but this custom design website is an experience it, this is the one which is going to teach you a lot of stuff okay one is how to book a domain next one is how to host what kind of host do you require do you need a windows hosting or do you need a linux hosting and how do you 
uh, do an SEO on it? And then how do you build? What kind of framework do you use to build a website? And where do you start from? What is H1 tag? What is H2 tag? This is what we expect from you. This is what you should learn real time. The best way to learn this is to build your own website. Okay. When you custom design your own website, that will that has more chances for you to get a job, especially in a design studio like Lollipop or even any other design studio. Even back at Ogilvy days, right? When I used to head the digital department of Ogilvy and TVWA, we always gave importance to the designers who had their own website. Not website hosted somewhere, but custom design website. It's so easy to design websites these days. There's so many tutorials. It only takes two full days. That is 10 hours of two days to learn how to build a website. And frameworks are so beautifully defined today. Today you have Twitter Bootstrap, and which is responsive, which works across all the devices. And you have so many guides and tools are so advanced. So we used Photoshop, which is not meant for building websites to build websites. But today you have Sketch, you have XD, you have so many tools out there where you can define an artwork for which screen it is. And you can define... Um, your grid then system and you can directly export it to HTML and can edit the HTML and upload it as a website and then add micro interactions and stuff. Okay. Please make sure that when you are presenting your portfolio, if you can design your own custom website, right, that will kind of get everyone's attention in a company like ours. Second one. Okay. Now coming to the point, why do we need a portfolio? Okay. And next one is, um, what should I put in my portfolio? As a student, right, you'll be running out of topic. You don't know what to put in your portfolio. And a lot of people end up taking this kind of topic, Save Tiger, Global Warming, Weather App. Out of 2,000 profiles that I've scanned, right, most of the uh, case studies have been around global warming and weather application. Weather application is like every portfolio on Dribble and Behance, every designer has this one case study of a weather application. I don't know what's with the weather. I think you get to do all this crazy cloud movings and all that. But in reality, it's very difficult to implement those things because whatever you design, right? You have to look at the tech capabilities, tech feasibilities. You cannot move clouds in a low end phone because the RAM doesn't support. Thus, whenever we look at this crazy design full of drop shadow gradient and all this stuff, right? We know for the fact that this designer doesn't know or doesn't understand any tech technical things. So, how to pick a good case study? So look at an existing app, right? Like for example, if you want to score a job in uh, Zomato or, 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 or Swiggy or anywhere, take one of their uh, feature or functionality or try to redesign the entire application. Entire application might take you a long time, but at least take one flow and redesign it and tell a full story of how did you, why did you redesign this and how, what, what is the process that you follow? Or there's so many brands out there, right? There's so many small brands, small to medium startups who require your help. Reach out to them. So I prefer doing this, the second point, because that will teach me connecting with people, the technique of sales. Because today, as a designer, from being an artist to a visual designer to an entrepreneur, I do sales. The first project that I sold was Mintra. The second was Swiggy. I spoke to the founders and I sold the concept and we designed the application. So no college, no art or a visual design college teaches you how to do sales. But when it comes to case study on your own portfolio, right, you can get down to the field. You can meet these people, the small brands and startups, right? They're very approachable, especially when they get free stuff, right? They will call you home. So, so go and meet them, okay? Take real case studies or identify the industry gap and build a product. Like for example, uh, we are in the situation, we are in a COVID situation where uh, we always see uh, doctors, nurses, and the government uh, uh, employees in the forefront fighting this for us. I always wonder why is that nurses and doctors are in the forefront? Why can't designers also be in the forefront to fight this? Um, a good example is um, in the past, uh, designers and engineers together, they've shrunk the entire bank into a machine called ATM, right? And they have, Deploy the ATM everywhere so that people can walk in, withdraw money and walk on. Now together as a designers and engineers, we can shrink the entire hospital and we can turn that into some kind of an ATM, right? Where people can just walk in, check the temperature, just walk to the next step and look, check whether they have the virus or no. 
and then the screen tells you what next and what what are the next steps or if they are if they turn out to be positive they can stay inside and the ambulance will pick up something like that i'm just throwing up ideas okay these are the things that we need to identify the industry gaps now what a beautiful time we are locked at home and there's so many things to learn apart from cooking cleaning and all the stuff that regularly we do i think this is the best time to every student out there to build a kick ass portfolio there's so many industry gaps now if you look at um, every school right uh, which never considered to go digital now they're panicking uh, my my kids school right they don't have anything on digital apart from attendance and uh, some notification they don't have even a single course on a digital platform now students can't go back now every school has to go digital now this is a beautiful industry gap right and uh, even if you look at it from a healthcare system or a fintech or wherever you see you see this gaps take one of those create a story out of it and make a case study this will more likely get get you a job okay i'll move on to the next screen okay the very first thing that you have to do is write a brief write a brief like a client okay um one thing that you need to avoid is to look for inspirations i have seen a lot of designers once they go on to dribble or behans right there goes another 8 to 10 hours only taking inspiration they keep liking other people work and they come back and they don't do anything it's it's the same behavior as uh, youtube right you go to search one recipe you end up seeing movies celebrities gossips news and all the stuff and by the time you look at the clock it's over no time to sleep so stop looking for inspiration okay really stop looking for inspiration and write a brief like a client how to write a brief there's so many beautiful articles out there go to google and search for how to write a design brief write a brief keep the brief very crisp and mention about what are the business goals okay with every project out there right even at lollipop we have we have crafted close to 250 projects okay every project has a business intention so they either want to increase the user base or they either want to increase the revenues or they want to increase the brand awareness something okay that those are the first things that we need to understand and next one is how do we make this happen what is the strategy the design can be one of the strategy marketing or and all the stuff at the end of it a client measures our solution so the engagement right if they say lollipop we're going to give this contract to lollipop corner lollipop is going to work on this project for 6 months they'll measure the outcome of 6 months today there's so many tools out there where design can be measured so people are asking for design roi now so student as a students you guys have to be prepared so when you write your own brief right please mention about the business goals the marketing strategy and a design roi okay so uh what i've seen right uh, the most um not so great part of all the portfolios that i come across they cook up personas how stupid is it to cook up personas while we have peep, so many people around us they just make up personas these personas are like like a gandhi and ambedkar photo in a police station man nobody follows what they have left nobody follows what they have told us it's just uh, one of the activities that you guys do just create a person and leave it and finally don't follow the person up we really value people when they get down to the field when they go meet the users today we are blessed with phones so beautiful and high quality camera videos and all this you can take video the cinema quality things on your phone create videos take photos of real personas talk to them understand like i spoke to you about how to shrink the hospital and turn that into a kiosk right so can we go meet real users not at this situation but once all this comes down probably you can when you decide on what project to work go meet them speak to them video record take photos write stories about them and put it in your case study this is what makes us look at your case study and also discuss about your case study internally to uh, we, there, there's so many incidents where we have Uh, taken some of the really uh, well crafted case study and we have learned from it some students have thought things to us so here is my suggestion please meet users please do not write some john or something and put some stock images and all this stuff okay please avoid stock images please go out meet the real users take photos of them write their stories and take a video of them and finally when you make your portfolio stitch all the videos together the entire journey how you started the project how you wrote the brief and how you got down to the field met the user when you make this video right sometimes you don't have we don't have to sit and scan through your case study that one video is good enough for you to score the job 
So now coming to the case study, how do you present a case study, right? If you have a portfolio, now um, the very first thing is a small introduction. Please keep in mind, put all the best practices of design in your case study. I've seen people running text from this corner to that corner. There's a best practice for paragraphs. There's a best practice practice for headlines. There is bite-sized content. And today, please understand, there is a lot of best practices in everything from content hierarchy, visual hierarchy. There, there, there is people have defined it. They defined it by understanding the user behavior. So today, design is not just a beautification. Design is, it's all about the strategy, psychology, technology, and art. When, when you bring all this together, right, you will craft a beautiful product. Now coming back to the introduction, introduction has to be bite-sized. Please remember today, nobody reads website or nobody reads content. They serve content. La, when was the last time you read content on the website? You keep serving. And then you see something that will catch your attention, especially when there's a good balance of a visual and a small bite-sized content, the more likely you're going to read that. And then you're going to take an action. So take the same learning and put it in your case study. Small, simple introduction. And then no design jargons because your portfolio and your case study, not necessary. It's always the designers who is reviewing your portfolio. There is non-designer, there is HR department, there is product, ed, there are so many other people, right? In a design studio like us, it is designers who are scanning your profiles. But if when you go to uh, Infosys and Repros of the world, it's not the designers who will be scanning your profiles. They'll be non-designers. So avoid design jargons. And again, design process, the most important thing. So there is no standard set design process, okay? We have design thinking practice and all this stuff. But um, you can define your process based on the budget, based on the timeline, based on the go-to-market strategy. At Lollipop, we follow four Ds. That is discover, define, design, and then develop. But if a client comes to us and says that, hey, I've raised funds and I need to go live by, in, uh, I have to go live in two months. I cannot go and tell him that we follow this design thinking process and even you should follow. So we adapt to that. We adapt to that and we quickly build a product. There's so many you know, design process. There is rapid prototype, there's build fast, fail fast, there's agile, there's waterfall. It's, it's not, every design process is right until unless you follow it and until unless you know this will work. So design process is very much aligned with the budget, timeline and the go-to-market strategy. Okay, now you come up with your own process. It could be you start with user research or you start with uh, data where you're trying to collect the data from the client. Like for example, it could be e-commerce, Amazon. Amazon is trying to build another new section. It could be Kirana stores. Uh, you need to find out how many Kirana stores are there around you or around uh, in a rural place, in a tier two, tier three. These, this, this, these data are available. So you take the data and you put it in an Excel sheet, you make some sense out of it and you visualize that data. And finally, you can bring all that stuff. You can put it in your case study and you can write a meaningful content to it, saying that, hey, around rural areas, so many Kirana store. Around in the tier two and tier three, there's so many Kirana store. Now, based on this, this is the tech savviness. This is the non-tech savviness people. Based on this, this is what the outcome is. We need to build a desktop and a mobile app. Why mobile app? Why desktop? Why um, um, any other uh, digital touch points? Okay. So uh, with when you're presenting, when you're designing your case study, keep the content bite size. And uh, when you're putting down your pro design process, right, make sure you balance it with the visuals, especially when you're talking about person or user research, right? Put real photos of how you traveled and whom did you meet there? Or if you have a video, post it somewhere in a video platform and put the link there. These are the things that really excite us because at Lollipop, right, what used to be just a visual design studio, today clients are asking designers to participate in deciding about the technology. Clients are asking designers to participate about how should we market the product. So I think we have, we have come a long way and this is the beauty of this field. So now everyone across the domain, across the industry, even very soon government is going to take a design first approach. Very soon when a government, even before putting a plan or building a metro or whatever, they'll invite designers and they'll ask designers to come up with solution and then they will start working on it. But for us to come up with solution, we should know everything. We should know from the marketing angle, from uh, psychology, from a strategy, and uh, then 
then wrap it up with a beautiful art. So do not take photographs of the sticky notes that you put on the wall because when we are reviewing your case study, we can't read anything that is inside the sticky note. That is only gives a tick off saying that, okay, this was an exercise that you did. But until unless you can take a photograph where the content are visual, uh, are readable, are, um, are presented well, then you put photographs or else create information architecture, site architectures and all that. And then wireframe. If you're presenting a wireframe, don't vomit all the wireframes on your case study. Pick the main flows and annotate the wireframe. Very, very important. Why this wireframe? What is this for? If it is iOS, what is the best practice you followed? If it is Android, what is the other best practice did you follow? And what is the new innovation that you, you're bring, trying to bring in here? So now, people talk about innovation and design, right? Uh, especially in a digital platform, what is innovation? Innovation is what user wants, what user needs, what can business really implement what can technology handle when you bring all this stuff that's where you need to innovate you can't go out of the box and say that hey i'm going to build uh, augment reality for your company so while the company stakeholders might be really excited about augment reality but is it feasible to build an augment reality it's expensive can the technology handle it can the phone handle it there's so many questions right so innovation should be within these three things okay then then put another section saying that these are the things that I found out. This is the data. This is what use is, and these are the innovative ideas that we have come up with. Now the last bit, the visual design. <clears throat> this is where everyone understands. Uh, there are mo most likely that people are going to skip all the stuff because it's not that um, great, right? It's full of content and uh, boring elements. This is where things gets really excited. Uh, hello. Am I audible? Uh, should I continue? Yes, please. Yes, please. Anil. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, this is where um, uh, everybody's attention is. Be it designer, non-designer, or, or HR, or a decision maker. This is where they're going to decide whether to bring you on board or no. But um, this, even this is very, very important. That's why I told you, you have to wrap it up with beautiful art. Your presentation, your visual design, design system. Uh, maybe next time I'll do a, a session on design system. Design system is so important today because every product is scaling. Scaling across geography, scaling across hardware, and scaling across the industries. So, on, like for example, what Paytm was a simple digital wallet has become something else today. The last Paytm product is fully designed and uh, research. the research and the design was done at Lollipop. It's called Paytm Money. Very well received. This is the process that we followed. We met users, we got down to the field and we met close to 140 um, users and across India and uh, we interviewed them, we video recorded and we won four awards for that Paytm money. Now coming back to the visual designs. So design system, read about design system. It's very, very important. Design, don't start off with the colors. There's a psychology behind colors. There's a psychology behind font and there is a technology behind font because today font has to render on a digital platform, right? You have serif, sans serif, your slab, your modern fonts. There's so many fonts. So what fonts does justice to this brand? And what font should you use in mobile? And what font should you use in mobile in desktop? Can I use a same font across? And what font supports multiple languages? And there's only few fonts that renders the other language. And other rest of the fonts, they don't render it properly. So does this font have all the characters? And does this font works in a bigger size and a smaller size this is the research you have to do in your visual design if you can cover that up right quickly covers put your alphabets and say that it renders it works across all the devices and all the stuff and next colors write a little bit of why did you pick this primary colors why the secondary colors write the psychology behind it where does it work write about the geography this colors make an impact in india in us this is the kind of an impact like why do all uh, the global brands use blue, right? You know, you know the reason behind blue, right? Blue is for soothing, calming, and all the stuff. But another thing about blue, blue, blue is the only color that across the globe, right? Every country is associated with that color. How? When you look up, the sky is blue. No matter where you go, right? When you look up, the sky is blue. But you look down, the color changes. When you look down in Middle East, it's brown. When you look down here, it's a different color. When you look down in New Zealand, it's green. 
and it's all different colors so blue is a color that everyone connects to that's why linkedin twitter just name all the big brands right they all use blue and the play safe and red is another color people connect but red has its own meaning but um it's a very bold color so there is um there's so many you know, books and uh, articles and tutorials about color usages and next comes the ui elements why did you use such ui elements it could be input or it could be the radio buttons and all this stuff today all this ui elements you can do interaction around it when you click on a button you can have some blast or you can have some beautiful loader and all this stuff these things you need to define because this is modern design if you just leave a button there that's outdated design in a modern design you need to show the interaction you need to sh- then again in the, the next thing is you need to show the important flows in the design visual design only the last one which will grab everyone's attention is the micro interaction please show an animation today there's so many tools adobe xd allows you to animate the screens and it's predefined animation you don't have to learn coding or you don't have to learn animation you just connect two screens and choose which animation it just shows like for example you have a pop up coming from down or pop up coming from top or some action on a button and all this stuff it's predefined you put all the stuff then present your portfolio this is more likely this presentation is more likely to win everybody's attention and also get you get your dream job now after all the stuff you have to make your resume right we have to design our resume some of the do's and don'ts of the resume um put you put all the design practice best practice in your resume keep it one page not multiple page do not talk about do not put quotes do not talk about um how good you are with design do not measure your skills very 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 simple the most important thing in your resume is the title uh, the role that you want to apply and whether you have a website behance and a dribble link and a little bit about yourself when you say yourself every designer has a story because this is the only domain where people have a story why they joined design you should mention the des- that story It'll be really beautiful for us to read and keep it short and crisp and i know one um an, uh, one of our lead designer his name is satish when he applied at lollipop right he said i was forced into engineering but i am a designer so i studied 5 years of engineering my father's dream was to be, uh, for me to become an engineer so i studied engineering i took up an engineering job i made my father happy now i'm a designer so so beautiful so honest and i read that and uh, but a uh, sad part is he didn't have anything to show in the design but he made a beautiful short movie um which uh, which was about uh, power cut in tamil nadu so there is a massive power cut um, even today uh, this this story is like almost 6 years back when i 6 7 years back when i started all about it send a small um, video where a client and a designer are having a conversation on skype and you can't see each other that's a beautiful dialogue between two and it was so beautiful that i just fell in love with the clip and i told him to come down to bangalore i have a job for you so he worked as ass out and then um, he learned everything about design in 3 years he was leading the team and he was the one who designed all the kickass projects at all about so in your resume please put your photo photo really adds to it and the girls please don't take selfies and pout and all that because some of the resume some of the, the photos that i've seen right it really doesn't impress us and boys no biceps and bikes keep it simple if you can illustrate your own photo nothing like it it will add great value to your resume and keep it clean even if you don't have anything to add even if you don't have an experience it really doesn't matter so there is a myth that people don't hire students or people don't hire um people don't who don't have experience it is it is it is not true okay um we, if you look at lollipop we purely uh, look at the portfolio if the portfolio is crafted beautifully we don't look at the experience and we are honest with the clients also we always tell the client that hey i have someone fresher from the college who is really excited to work on this project can we give him this opportunity they always say yes client it, it is all about convincing right we redesigned burger king and it has come out so beautiful and the entire design is done by freshers from straight from the college and we went to the client and we told the client that hey burger king here are the college students who lived on burger king and they are the right people to work on this project rather than get someone who is as old as me who are so health conscious who never goes to mcdonalds and not burger king i would be the wrong person to design that so the client was a yeah, perfect man i think we should be the other guy who should, should design it and we gave that opportunity they did killer design which is going to go live very soon 
so be very honest with your uh, resume uh, tell whatever story it is how did you get into design because people who have got into the design domain right they have a story to say either they are not good at studies or they love art they want to pursue their career in this creative field there's so many stories right? unlike engineering more 99% of all the engineers have been forced to become an engineer even doctors for that case but in- designers are the only one who have a beautiful story why they joined design okay and uh, keep in mind your resume uh, in my experience in the 23 years of scanning the resume right the maximum time that we spend is 60 seconds 60 seconds is what we spend because in day in and out in an organization like lollipop we receive close to 100 uh, resumes but we don't go through all 100 resumes it is hr who scans to first and next comes to us so keep in mind keep it crisp and uh, no, don't talk too many things don't measure your own skills and role and position very important website behance or dribble very very important and again the downside of behance and dribble right it's a great platform i'm not i'm i'm not against such platforms it's a beautiful platform and the thanks to the community who built such platform but the only thing about behance or dribble right it's exactly like youtube like for example if you send me your behance link i go there i also see other profiles then i go look at their their profiles and i also come across another profile we see that profile and finally instead of looking at your profile we ended up looking 10 15 profile then we tell the hr can you also look at those guys so this is the only problem with behance and dribble okay your website when we go there if you can build a beautiful experience we stick to your website there'll be no bouncing here and there we will finish your website then we come back we'll write to the hr saying that wonderful website please bring this person on board and put relevant experience if you have if you don't have it doesn't really matter education it's absolutely fine that is not the deciding factor deciding factor is your current portfolio remember your portfolio is the key to unlock great opportunities please time designing and crafting your portfolio the book that i showed right i did four versions of it before i could print that print costed me 750 rupees that is the amount of time and money i was ready to invest because that was the last book that was the last wine that i sent and after that i never ever created a portfolio or a resume because that job got me another job another job got me another job another job got me another job but still i kept my website alive i still uploaded things on my website i started sharing uh, um, my learning my new learnings on my website and i started connecting with the design ecosystem okay so portfolio spend a lot of time on your portfolio guys and this is really really important and i see designers like me right when we look at the portfolio we really come to know how passionate you are we come to know all the time pass designers also so people say that hey i'm passionate i have this qualification i do this and other but when when we look at the portfolio it is all wasted all the things that you mentioned toss poke everything be wasted so please pay attention to your portfolio craft a beautiful portfolio come to an organization like us and present it and uh, some of the most important few important things when you're presenting your portfolio right know the story very well keep some of the key points when you come and present your portfolio to us and uh, some other things is please be on time and um, um please express why you want to work in that organization especially people write a lot of stuff to the nigera job at lollipop they write personal notes they write about our own story which we don't know they make a collage of our work this is beautiful man this is this is something that you are talking about us to get a job here and uh, <clears throat> these are the things you need to keep keep experimenting with i i know a person in new zealand uh, he wanted to work under uh, a, a great designer in new zealand so what he did um, he hired a projector and he made a artwork of that fellow and he projected on that fellow's building it was so beautiful and it was in the newspaper just to get a job look at the amount of uh, uh, struggle and things that he went through to get that job so please do these kind of things please do these kind of creative things right tomorrow when you grow big you'll have a beautiful story to tell people or else this resume is on uh, deep behinds dribble or pdf or any word or word format we have we have we have 1.4 billion population i think everyone is trying to do the same thing and do not download any templated the resume is out there it's easy for us to catch and when we come across that right we also have a database of resumes where we put a few resumes under certain folder where we come to know that you have 
copied some of the content and other stuff and we'll never in, entertain such things even if you reapply back right it always remind that tool reminds us that this is the same fellow who copied the content or he, he didn't even bother to design his portfolio so th that's when you lose all the stuff so pay attention to the portfolio spend money spend time and especially when you finish your university right that six months or one year gap that you have show us what you did because that is where we go to that is that is where you shine a lot of people say that i was looking for a job so looking for a job is not a 8 hours task right Look, looking for a job is like uh, you wake up morning you apply for a job when you close it then you can do something what is that something we want to see even if it is a month or two months whether you want to take a break go out some people right some designers they said i have taken a break three months i was doing some i was not into design but they showed something else that they were into the three months they were into trekking they made a beautiful video creatively they were trying to do something and those are the things we love to see okay so that gap work on projects work on uh, our task that you pick up from the industry find out the gap in the industry work on that and identify where you want to build your career in a design studio like us or in a product company or in a services any other services company identify that and customize your portfolio based on that you're more likely you're going to get a job there okay the last screen is about me and i'll open up for questions now and uh, please follow me on instagram i'm uh, very active there i keep posting stories my artworks and um, what not everyday happenings in my life i posted there so my journey i've come a long way and um, built a beautiful studio and today i can proudly say that uh, we have put india on map for design because a lot of foreign brands are reaching out to us to craft a beautiful experience my dream was when i came back in 2011 when i approached this brand which i don't want to take their name they said they're going to uk for design my dream was to ensure that nobody goes to uk or western or european world for design because that great design and great solution providers are here in india and people should consider indian designers first the beauty of it is now all the indian products are designed in india and now foreign products are coming to india so beautiful um career and uh, i think designers are going to do wonderful even after post covid with all the fears of uh, job uh, global recession don't worry about all that stuff that is that is going to happen but it will touch the design domain but the best will survive like in any domain right best will always survive and uh, please make the best use of this time it's been one month that we have locked down and i'm think it'll be another month before we get back two months we can do wonderful stuff we can build great portfolio build website two months is enough to learn coding two months is enough to understand the strategy two months is enough to uh, find out where you want to work and what kind of a portfolio you should build and put a structure in place hi so i am uh, i'm atita from the 8th semester and Hello. you know how lockdown has changed the entire scenario and how it is getting all of us from my batch you know into a thing that will we get a job or what is going to happen what is the situation with the economy falling down so i mean is there anything that you can guide us that you can guide us with in this situation yeah uh, see this pause was required okay mm, let's not look at the negative side of this um, pause uh this is very much required because i think we humans were running really fast um uh, i think we had to slow down and uh, uh post this right we will come back with a lot of respect for everything be it job be it education be it family be it whatever it is even the environment right we'll come back with a lot of respect this time do not worry about your job this is not the right time for you to go and find a job you'll be disappointed that if you get rejected okay have a good time cook good food eat build great portfolio learn new things and uh, if you're good at writing write about new things that you have learned okay companies like us we are still looking for good designers okay global recession yes it will make a small impact on our business but that doesn't mean that we go we all fall down right so that that we going to see the my plan for this covid is to how to come out of it and how to build even more successful company okay this is what i am planning and every designer at lollipop is aligned to it and we are working towards it and we see the positive sign of it and i'm sure every company is working on it 
So do not go by the media saying economic crisis and all that. Please take examples as Japan after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, what happened? The country was wiped out. Yeah. Within a few years, they were back, man. Yeah. And India is a emerging country, right? And we are not going to sit silent. No one is going to sit silent. If, for example, you take one of the biggest brand in India, could be Flipkart or whatever. If it goes down, they will plan to how to come up. And they will look for the right people to come up. And the right FIFA people bracket, you should fit in. So you please make sure you fit in the right bracket. Okay. For example, at Lollipop, they're looking for a designers who could, who was good at data because now we can't get down on the road to do research, right? So now we are so dependent on the data. Learn about data. Simple. Apply for a job, you'll get a job. Does it answer your question? It does. It's just that everyone from my batch, we are all just scared about the situation right now and we are just terribly, you know, nervous about this thing. So that is the only thing I wanted to ask you about. I'll tell you this after this, right? Um, uh, every designer uh, will be in demand. Be in huge demand. Life has gone digital for everyone. It has yeah. gone so digital that IoT products are going to be big. And some of the domains like education, healthcare, e-commerce is going to rise and shine now. Just wait for the time. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, hi, Anil. So I got this question from a student. Um, the question is, when you say custom design website, do you mean like, uh, I think what she means is a Wix or a no. WordPress website? A no. custom made Wix website or a custom made WordPress website? Or do you prefer a self-coded website? Or does it anyways make any difference? See, code really doesn't matter. So let's understand what is WordPress. WordPress is a CMS. CMS is a content management system. Okay. In WordPress, there are two options. One is you take an existing template and you plug it to the WordPress. Okay. That's not what I'm talking about. You can take WordPress and you can redesign your website inside WordPress. Okay. The banner can be you, your photo or whatever you want to do with it. Or you want to tell out a message and then you scroll down. You have to do another story. You scroll down this portfolio and all this stuff. This is called custom design website. Okay. Uh, it really doesn't matter whether you use WordPress. Uh, Wix is again is not a custom design. It's a templated where you go there, you pick one of the templates and you put it. But Wix is... Me. It yeah, it, 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 it is not considered as custom design. Uh, mm -hmm. Custom design is like when you buy a domain and pick up a hosting and whether you choose Umbra or WordPress or Drupal or whatever, that's uh, it's left to you. But the template is some, has to be something that you designed it and you coded it. It really makes a difference. Also, probably, you know, you design the navigation, you use the basic yeah. forms and shapes that, let's say, WordPress gives you and then use it to your need or whatever. I mean, yeah. whatever you feel is right, is what you're saying. Yeah. And also look at all new ways of doing it, right? Because a few years back, there was no hamburger menu, right? So then the, the entire web community decided that uh, the navigations are getting really cumbersome. Now we need to put everything inside somewhere. So that's when hamburger menu was introduced. And there's so many different kinds of menus. And this hamburger menu has best practice designs, okay? And a best practice animation. When you click on it, there should be scroll down swoosh and do all the stuff show us all the stuff because these scripts are freely available download the script plug it in and change the colors change a little bit of an animation and show us I think this is where we up, see the interest i think your login and sign up has completely changed with the hamburger menu in today's, yep. today's day and yep. day. um yep. uh, again another question that i got is um don't you think that i think I'll just change the structure of the question here. Don't you think that there's um, a, a becoming a stricter list of do's and don'ts in design in today's world? Um, isn't this way of design at a higher level dictating design or what to do and what not to do? Yeah, you know, I'm against it. <laughs> but I understand uh, UI UX is like um, Kung Fu or a Karate. It comes with its rules, okay? And graphic design is like a street fight. It doesn't have any rules. Yeah, print design never has any rules and I'm a big fan of a print design and every uh, disruption or any new innovation that has happened in the digital world is from artists and the graphic designers. Okay, those are the people who come with no restrictions. Like for example, if you're designing a poster for print, you go crazy. There is no rules. You can make your typography big, small, photographs, effects and all that. But when it comes to digital platform, right, 
is different. Technology defines things. Okay, and next one is the user centric. When we say user centric, hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, cool. Okay, when we say user centric, right? There are certain not rules, but um, certain psychological factors, certain behavioral patterns um, uh, that will uh, make an impact on the product. Like, for example, if you take Swiggy or Uber or something, certain things have to be in certain place so that they make business out of it. You can't take a button and hide it just to be creative. Uh, then, uh, especially non-tech savvy people don't understand. And it's a slow progress, right? Uh, if you look at what website used to look 10 years back, what it is now, it is drastically changed. 10 years back, it was templated. Now we are experimenting with it. Now we have bought illustrations. We have bought micro interactions. Now browsers have matured. We have uh, enabled other technologies to do create stuff, HTML5, CSS. So when I started my career, there was no CSS. There were only three forms that you could use on a website. And it was structured. This is how a website should be. From there to here, we've come a long way. From here to the next couple of years, I think um, we'll have OpenGL. We have 3D and all this stuff. So we just, we just have to wait the technology for it to uh, be ready and adapt to this design change. Absolutely. Um, oh, sorry, my camera is uh, off. Yeah. Um, can you speak a little bit about um, the importance of a navigation structure or importance of system design? Because I think that navigation and system, I think, is I mean, used by almost all departments, not just graphic designers, but everybody who's probably doing their portfolio, everybody who's probably designing. So, how important is that? Yeah, navigation is like a map, right? Um, sometimes you know the route, but still you turn it on just to be safe. Uh, so navigation is, uh, it's an art. Okay, navigation is an art. And again, navigation you know, on a digital platform comes with the best practice. So um, I know a friend of mine who designed a navigation for a physical location that was airport. So beautiful, his case study was wonderful. I don't know if I still have that case study. If I can find it, I'll share it with you. you can share it with your students. It's beautiful from the entry to your um, luggage drop off to the restrooms to the security. It was so beautiful. So much thought process put into it. And I think uh, that we have bought the similar stuff into the, uh, the same learning from uh, physical world to the digital. But digital again, like I told you, it's like Kung Fu or Karate with certain, certain rules where the navigation has to be there on the top. Now imagine if you take the navigation and move to the bottom just to be creative, okay? By default, a user expects a navigation to be in a certain place. Now it is missing. Until unless the business is ready to take the risk, we are fine with it. But a lot of business won't risk it. They won't risk it. And in, in a digital platform, right? There is this pattern called Z, Z pattern. You understand the Z pattern, right? Z, the starting starts from the logo, the navigation, then comes to the information and then an action. So certain patterns work. Facebook, when you don't log in, when you go to the facebook.com, it works on Z pattern. LinkedIn works on the Z pattern. Twitter works on Z pattern. There's a form first approach. There's so many things out there. So business always tells us, like, guys, play safe, follow these practices. We don't want to risk our business. And... Uh, for other companies, right, they come out and say that oh, screw all this and we'll do something unique. If you want to move the navigation, move it. We'll experiment with it. Um, I designed a portal for Adidas and that uh, the client literally said that I don't want any typical e-commerce. Just break it. Break the e-commerce. So we shot a video. We shot a video of um, um, Adidas um, brand ambassadors. They were, uh, um, it, it, it was uh, rugby World Cup time, which happened in New Zealand. And uh, the concept was to get um, the celebrities to run in the field with uh, rugby ball. And uh, there were fans chasing them. So what we, what we did was we shot this video in phantom camera, which was about 1000 frames per second. And the website is actually a video. It is video of this person running and his fans chasing and they all jump. When you hover the mouse, everyone freezes. Then you can buy the stuff that, that they're wearing. So it was an experience, okay? This was a totally different experience. And the risk that we took was, then broadband was not that big, internet speed was not that great, but still we risked it. We, we altered the technology to work, but you don't get such opportunities with every client. Most of the clients will come say that, will come to us, will say that play safe. We don't want to risk business. Okay, um, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Anil. I will open up to Piyush. Piyush, can you go up for your question? 
yes sir. so hello sir we are uh, i am a sam6 student of uh, graphic design. for the lockdown we were actually in our portfolio building stages so okay. what the problem we really faced was concluding on a decision like uh, we have so many uh, expectations and uh, different options and we have set goals for us so that we cannot conclude on a decision while we are making our portfolio so how do we conclude on one decision that we may really make what kind of decision is it picking on a topic or so, picking on a design uh like choosing your pro- which project should go on that or even basic things like what should we put uh, if we are putting our navigation flow how should we design it or there i have a better way of doing that this is not right um like i said right in the presentation i said start with the brief write a brief okay. like client and mm-hmm. without the brief right uh, you are basically uh, shooting in the dark uh, with a uh, brief yeah. should be written like a client and uh, in the brief uh, write it like a client saying that in the two months this is the budget and this is what the outcome should be so then all the uh, direction towards the visual design or navigation everything becomes clear like uh, let me give you an example you are you write a brief to build an application for farmers yeah. right okay farmers in india uh, are they tech savvy no they not tech savvy can they offer technology or they cannot offer technology okay and how did they learn farming through ancestors right someone in the village have taught them or some ancestral practice right now you are trying to bring technology will they adapt to technology not immediately what are the new things that you are going to do so that they'll adapt to technology is something that you need to define slowly so my stage 1 is going to be this once they adapt to this one stage 2 is going to be this exactly like what facebook did facebook didn't have like share poke um, videos and everything in one shot they started with something they had like they measured the like like work then they put share share work wonders then they put something something didn't work then they keep experimenting and they slowly opened up for business and now facebook is you can play games you can connect with people you can chat you can do a lot of stuff so uh, when you write a brief uh, just write in stages they say that my poc uh, proof of concept is going to be this my mvp minimal viable product is going to be this so once i launch this this is what i'm going to do next get okay, don't dive into navigation and think about what is my navigation going to be end of the day it is business and the users what does the business want what does the user need simple match that write a brief and then craft thank you so uh sneha you are up yes good afternoon sir good afternoon so um sir right now i'm just in my second semester so like i'm a first year student so uh, you've been speaking so much about portfolios and right now i feel like we are just beginners right we can't really put something on a portfolio because all we are doing is college related work right now so do you have any advice for us like beginners on where we can begin or what we can do at this stage enjoy your college life um the second one is don't worry about job everyone will get a good job and the third one is uh unfortunately um this generation we have a huge expectation yeah. okay huge expectation and uh, it is not just us it's the industry that is expecting you guys to have all sort of knowledge okay it doesn't matter whether you're in second year or a third year or fourth year really doesn't matter okay make the best use of this time today education is not limited to universities okay like i mentioned in the resume right the last thing that we look at is an education okay though good universities are important but um, one of the best designers in the world they don't come from stanford or uh, harvard university they are uh, from dropouts and all this stuff so this two years this you are in the second year another three years to go right you have a beautiful time to learn new things okay experiment new things okay and today uh, knowledge is not limited to university go to youtube if you want to learn about maybe you're not good at presenting things maybe you're great at designing but you're not good at presenting your own designs there are so many people talking about presentation skills how do you stand in front of a stage and how do you put lift your head up and speak there's so many things practice all those things at this time and uh, like participate in small events so give a small talk within in within your college university prepare a small case study keep keep trying new things out right so with my career right um 
uh, my family, right? Uh, when I studied, when I was studying, we were not financially well off, so I was forced to work when I was studying. So uh, my first job that I applied was as a caricature artist, but I never got that job. So that for that one job, there was a long queue for one artist job. So I was standing in the queue. I was the youngest guy standing there. They were all great uh, caricature and uh, cartoonists standing in the line to get that one job. So I ended up getting a job as a cleaner in the building. So that way I started my career. But on the sideline, right, I did a lot of artworks, a lot of small, small artwork and has made money out of it. And it's and it's so nice when you can, when you get paid for such small, small things, right? Don't wait for the final year to you know, um, make a business out of your learning. See if you can design a small logo for some shop, go and approach them and tell them, hey, your logo sucks, can I redesign it at a mini, minimal cost? If it can cover your dinner or a small treat, your client, nothing like that. Keep building the short, short, short stories, right? By third year, fourth year, you will have that unknown entrepreneurship inside you. So um, make the best use of this time. And I started uh, making money out of my art, uh, even in the first year itself. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Sneha. Um, thank you, Anil. Uh, the next question, I hope you don't mind taking a few questions here. Yeah? yeah, yeah. No problem. No problem. I have another session at uh, 4 o'clock. I'm okay. talking about uh, designing for cultures. <laughs> hey guys, um, happy World Design Day. Today is a World Design Day. I totally Thank forgot. Um, the next question, Anil, is um, I'll just kind of uh, expand the question slightly. Um, there's always this tug of war between process and outcome uh, in your portfolio. How much of process do you show versus how much of outcome do you show? There's a popular belief that if you're applying for foreign universities, you're applying for your master's abroad um, or agencies abroad look for process versus companies in India look for outcome. What is your take on that? Um, companies in India look for outcome and outcome has to have some process, right? Now, I don't know which companies just look for outcome. Yeah, I do believe that. Sorry, if you design visual design studio, they purely look at logo, how beautifully you design the logo. And they don't look at what is the process behind this logo. Why did you arrive with this shape or this color or anything? But um, I can't comment on them. But here at Lollipop, for us, process is important. Outcome is even more important. Um, process, why it is important? Because in the real world, right? Um, when you get, when we assign you a project, client is hell bent on understanding the process that you're going to follow. Because internally the client has to align all the stakeholders to this process like for example step one this step two this and step three this one it is important for a client to see how we are slowly progressing towards it and the process is extremely important and, and uh, some of the, uh, the things right um, be it europe or a western world is asking for it i think india also will start asking for process very soon uh, right now we are all very visual driven um, like uh, most of the portfolios that i've seen right it straight away starts with a beautiful interface Nice drop shadows, gradients and all that. For me, I don't pay attention to such good. So I only see the art part of it until unless it is like mind blowing visuals and then we call them to the studio and if that person cannot explain right of uh, how did he arrive with this design, then he won't get the job. So it is important to have a story in your head, whether you have defined a process in your uh, case study or not, but at least when, you, when we invite you guys, right, you should narrate that story. And no, not necessary that you have to be very good at speaking English. I studied in a government school and I never spoke English until my 10th. And uh, I realized that uh, if I have to go on a stage and present my work, I should know English. So I picked up English and I came on the stage and I started narrating my story. So today process can be covered in the form of uh, a beautiful presentation. So process is not a boring thing. Process is the most beautiful thing. It all depends on how you present your process. I worked with a Japanese designer in uh, New Zealand. He couldn't even speak one word of English, but he took a stage and explained the entire work. He was just acting on the stage. He was dancing and he was like expressing it. It's so beautiful. He had a standing ovation when he finished his presentation. So that entire explanation, right? It was the process of how we arrived at the work that he was presenting on the screen. So process is important. So I'm very sure that you would look at, uh, you know, customer profiling, the real life customers, the kind of systems that you've decided, why have you decided the what, why, when questions, if the designers can answer it. Yeah. Kind of Please understand, design is a beautiful solution. Okay. The true meaning of design is a plan. Okay. Design is not decoration. 
okay if you open dictionary and see the meaning of design means it's a plan so when you come up with a plan everyone wants to know what what the plan is what the plan is the process okay um one second sorry um so tamanna asks tamanna goel yeah how do we represent our study or research work that we have gathered from online data because of the lockdown we couldn't go out to research beautiful question visualize data uh, data visualization is going to be the next big thing we are sick of seeing the same graphs and pie chart and every organization right especially business consulting firms like kpmg or ey or all those guys they are sick of seeing the same visualized graphs which is like templated pie charts and all that i think designers have to step in now to visualize the data um i work with um, um david mccandles just look up for him on internet um he is a uk based data visualizer for him the way he visualizes data is like next level um for example if you're taking uh tigers tigers are disappearing right now you have the data how would you visualize tiger disappearing or a uh, number of tigers have been born a number of tigers died or why did they die can you visualize it not through graphs and pie charts can you visualize it in a different way can you use the tiger paw can you use a tiger skin tiger stripes or can you use something else that is related to the tiger can you create that kind of a beautiful environment where people when you present it right they go in so inside that environment or a tropical forest and then they look at the data the next big thing is going to be data visualization now sitting at home practice data visualization there's so many tools out there and there's so many ways of visualizing data times uh, times of india does it very well and last time i saw uh, people dying out of smoking this they used cigarettes buds and ashes to visualize the data it was beautiful so um, um design will branch out to this and data visualization is going to be the next big thing um does it answer your question or uh, do you, is there anything no, I specific think it does i think it does i think it does perfect um anvesha asks you said that design color has so much to do with psychology so what is your way of getting into somebody's head how do you get into somebody's head how i think what she means is how do you understand your customer do you read psychology books do you do you do you that i mean how do you do it yes i read a lot of psychology books and um, more than reading i think uh, if you connect with people right a uh, lot of people you will know their behavior or pattern so i travel a lot i do a lot of domestic travel and international travel so every time i come back i take a taxi so i speak to the taxi guys and uh, their frustration their stories and all the stuff um the more you speak to people right the more you understand about um, you know what is that they like what is that they don't like so that one taxi travel that 45 minutes coming back to home is enough for me to draw a picture of him and what he likes what he doesn't like and what makes him happy what doesn't make him happy that 45 minutes conversation is good enough i think that comes through an experience then again uh, the psychology of colors and what the client is expecting right um there is personal preference and there is what works okay what works is what we should really care for okay like for example um uh will you use red color for hospital okay uh, yes it's a bold color to use and why not there are a lot of hospitals who have used red as a color and uh, um you know like what is the impact of using such red colors in the hospital now uh now if you have to do navigation inside the hospital for people to reach certain destination what will happen when you put the red color because when a patient walks inside an hospital his emotions are different right he's panicking he wants to see the doctor they are different kind of patients right now see when they see the red color what is what happens to him what happens inside now all this stuff it is something it is an art of a designer to explain it to the client if a client says that hey I, my my hospital i want red now it is your job to explain that hey red is a beautiful color now if you put red in this environment right the most likely these are the things that will happen if you still want red we'll go and do it that is purely your personal preference we'll still go ahead and do it and also we can show examples of how other hospitals have used red and they've not overused red 
and uh, see end of the day when you walk into an hospital you need to calm patient now you need to look at colors the people uh, in healthcare they always use turquoise colors so uh, these are the things that we need to explain but if a client is very adamant right and then you can't do anything man just dance to your dance to your students so my way of understanding client is i i do not talk about the project with every meeting when before i start the design i'll try to connect with the client not with my design dialogues but beyond design dialogues like if it is this situation i'll speak for half an hour about um, the lockdown the business impact how is your family and all the stuff and maybe what movies and all the stuff and then slowly get to know him and draw a picture in my mind and then put certain colors that okay this is this character this is this character maybe he will um react to certain colors just try it and see if he reacts then build a story on top of it and know him even better this entire persona creation right it is so beautiful if you make it very meaningful right um you can draw a picture of a person and and write his characteristics without meeting him so the persona has to be so powerful so beautiful i think the more you you are exposed to psychology right you will you will know more about people uh, i think there's a huge learn a small and a big learning lesson here uh, exactly what anil said that you know if you're asking a question also it'll be nice if you can introduce yourself then we also know that who's speaking for example just giving yeah. up the um, personal connection is very much required uh, and see they know the day the people when you say client they might sound the one thing that comes in your mind is is a boring guy he keeps asking for changes and he is a human like us on the other side he eats the same food he watches movies he breathes he sleeps it's just another you are human with a different title as simple as that so if you connect with them as a human right then you will know him better cool thank you uh satakshi satakshi if that is how you pronounce your name um, satakshi sir yeah hi satakshi you are up uh, hello anil sir i'm satakshi sem sex student so what my question is it's not related to internships or jobs it's more about if you want to start your own uh, project like if you want to take it further so i have faced it and many of my batchmates even face it that if you have a concept or maybe some uh, something in your head and everything is ready even the proof of concept is ready with you what's the next step it's very difficult for us to actually approach the sponsors for your project maybe and in the outside countries i've seen that even if it's a ve- not very well established concept people are funding them for their projects so how do we approach people to fund that which country is for funding the projects so sir uh, like last year i went to dubai design week and there were a few people from different countries like our our aged uh, designers only and they were from other countries like belgium and germany so these people told us that our, uh, our college people provide us the other so so like if they are working in medical field they'll maybe search for fund funders who can actually get them to make the prototype for that concept so that really i i have never seen that happening in my college or around here in india so how do we tackle that i don't think so it's your college problem i think india design ecosystem problem so um um you know it's nice to see that uh, designers want to build product designers uh, want to become an entrepreneur um but uh, it's still a long way to go uh, and do you, do you know the indian government doesn't recognize designers yeah so we have no platform and uh, like if you take art music uh, every state has some sort of a uh, building given to them association given to them but for designers there's nothing there is no association of designers or there is no design minister so we are not heard but we will very soon will be heard i think when that happens right lot of organization will come forward to fund designers so right now uh, if you look at where does the funding comes if you are an iit iim uh, graduate right they were ready to listen because they think that you would know about business you know about lot of things and uh, they more likely those guys are going to uh, raise funds than the designers um uh, this is not a uh, one uh, uh, uh just the ecosystem problem this is not uh, just a university problem i think this is much uh, bigger um, uh, thing that we have we have to address um the other founders right uh, the other design studio founders we spoke about this and we are planning to do something about it this year let's see if we can bring some sort of an association and uh, also bring uh, other business entrepreneurs to fund some of these ideas i think you guys will have a great time but as of now you're right there is no there's nothing over there to identify such things and also another suggestion is while these ideas are great right um 
uh, see uh, out of thousand startups only two make it the rest they don't make it they don't make it because it is not that idea is wrong or idea doesn't work every idea works in india even if you want to sell a hair clip right it works it all depends on how do you how do you how you promote that hair clip so everything works but that journey it takes to get there right a lot of people give up they start initially it's so exciting i know this i'm going to crack this then finally when they come to reality right they'll be like okay screw it i don't want to do, do this it's too much waste of time you want to raise funds you have to knock so many doors people knock five doors and after that they'll be like i give up on this then again yes. technology implementation the uh, designs are so beautiful now come to the tech tech has limitations now you would have take you would have assumed three months for technology and finally it takes six months then you're like okay i don't want to do this a lot of dropouts in startups happen because of the patients and because uh, they they have don't they have not assumed or they're not uh, realized that the process of building a product yes sir thank you thank you for it really good um thank you satakshi um a quick question everybody is asking me you spoke about a data visualizer david something what is his full name sorry david mccandles m c c a n d l a s a b i d m c c a n d l a s okay yeah that's the one okay cool um jaydeep had a question uh hello sir my sir jaydeep so my question is that uh, the people who have not taken any formal education in the field of design or so or any degree how they should uh, uh, get uh, get connection to the like world class companies or the clients um let me show you something uh yes sir this is a resume sent by not from a design student from a non design student <laughs> interesting right this person has oh, yes, made an attempt to do something it's annoying to see open this and close it back but at least uh, it's a non designer who made an attempt to do something i think uh, the industry is not looking for uh, domain specific people uh the first thing that we look at lollipop is uh, the attitude and passion that's the reason i gave you an example of uh, our ui lead who is not from a design background from an engineering background who made a short video and that short video got him a job and uh, is the head of design now so um, design is not limited to designers only anyone can come in this domain and i think it all depends on how much you learn like i said right uh, learning is not limited to the university anyone can learn and uh, one of my good friend is a dentist so his father was so rich that he opened a dental clinic for him but no no patient came there so he was sitting and scribbling on his dental uh, that pad right then he realized he's a great artist you know where is he now he's in the gaming industry in uk <laughs> <laughs> so uh, his name is elil vendel just look up for him an amazing story man from a dentist to he learned the maya 3d then he realized that he can do something great here and uh, he is working for one of the biggest gaming industry in the uh, uk so i don't think so this this industry is limited to designers only educated designers or qualified designers it's open to everyone and uh, there is no this is how you should do this is how it should there's you can do whatever you just keep practicing it man and there's so many tutorials out there from youtube to people writing uh, articles producing articles and another tip that i would love to give is i law i see a lot of designers right they only attend all design events guys design events are outdated man you will have the same designers speaking the same shit everywhere so attend tech events attend marketing events attend music events that is where you will learn other things right do you know what is happening in technology do you know what is python do you know what is uh, the new technology that's coming out you have no clue but you know what technology is the canvas technology is the canvas where you are going to paint all your beautiful design right will be implemented on technology please attend all the tech events please make sure. friends with engineers please make friends with the non designers i have a lot of non designers friends and um, um, with lollipop my mentors two mentors are not from design field with designers designers there are too many designers around you man would you get bored of it everyone speaking the same shit thanks a lot sir okay uh, 
Anil, very curious to know what kind of a video uh, your uh, head UI or head UX uh, came up with. It was very immaturist, but I really like um, the idea because Tamil Nadu then um, the government was not in place and there were a lot of power cuts, massive power cuts. So basically it's a designer and a client. Client is expecting a design and the designer couldn't do it because there was a power cut. So he blanked out the screen, a Skype call. So they both are talking. And it's so beautiful. The conversation is so beautiful. And uh, let me find that video and share that link. Thank you. Thank you very much. By the way, that was my question. <laughs> and there was another designer who sent a song. He was playing guitar. He said, I don't have a portfolio. I don't have a work. Please give me a job or something. Like that. It was really funny. <laughs> so I got, I got him over. Then I asked him to play the song again. Then he played. Then uh, we gave him a job. Cool. Thank you so much. Any other questions, people? If not, then Srinidhi, you are up. If you have a question, then. Uh, okay. I have the last one. I'm sorry, I didn't write it. Uh, is it okay um, to ask? Yeah. Hi, 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 uh, Samita. Um, Anil, hi. Shabnakali from you. Yeah, hi. Hello. Yeah, hi, Anil. Uh, I just, uh, because we also uh, see a lot of portfolios every year and guide a lot of people uh, in different ways, I think. Uh, in your ADW talk also, we you spoke about a similar thing saying not really coming up with the uh, portfolios and everything which is so stereotyped. I just want to understand that how much weightage is given from your side when you look at the portfolios. Uh, weightage on skills versus the weightage on the uh, originality of ideas or you know, uh, some people also just to show their skills, they actually copy people's work and just produce it themselves. So what sort of weightage do you give to those sort of uh, portfolios? We give weightage to the story. Um, you can take, uh, you can still copy things. Copying is an art. So you can still look at uh, uh, other people who have done uh, this. You can take the same project, take some inspiration, but you can create a beautiful story out of it. Um, like for example, for donkey's years, Indian movie scripts have not changed. It's the same hero beating up the villain mm -hmm. and uh, then he gets married to the heroine. The same script, but so many directors have narrated it so beautifully. So, no, I mean, every movie that I watch, especially South Indian movie, the same shit. So, but every director has a different way of uh, producing the same, um, uh, like uh, directing it in, in a different way. So, um, I think uh, today, if I give a camera to someone and ask them to take a creative photograph, uh, no matter what photograph he takes, right, I can still say that I've seen this. I've seen this angle and I've seen it. But it all depends on how you captured it and uh, how you narrate the story of how you captured it. So the story is very important. So that's one of the reasons why I did the session of um, presenting your case study or a portfolio. There is a flow, there is a story, and uh, there is uh, photographs that you take, and uh, there is process that you follow. When a combination of all this comes right, that's when we get uh, now to uh, pay more attention to that profile. If you just show me a screenshot and say then take an inspiration from somewhere else, then we know that you have copied it somewhere. And, you don't look at the profile. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Anil. Uh, thank you, Anil. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Samita. Um, I'll take two more questions, and after yeah, that, yeah, I think last couple of questions. Uh, Satakshi, if you wanted to. Yes, sir. So my question was: Is Lollipop Design planning to hire any of the interns in the summer, like for the coming months? If yes, is it going to be? What is it going to be if it changes? Yeah, um, the sad part about internship now is uh, we are planning for a digital internship now. Um, I doubt if we can bring people to our office because um, um, this entire episode, right? First, we have to come back to office and settle down, not bring new people and add more to it. So, I think this summer the internship is not going to be as big as last summer. But we are planning for a digital internship. So we'll have to continue contrib contributing back to the design ecosystem. So we are planning for a digital internship, not a physical one. All right, then. Thank you. I think that's about it with the questions. Um, Colonel Bose, if you're there. <coughs> Colonel Bose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Anil, Kanil Bose. Uh, hi, Anil. Uh, 
Hello, sir. How are you? Uh, I was I was uh, trying to get in for the last an hour or so. The system didn't allow me. Uh, thereby, knowing the popularity, what Anil commands within the design fraternity and also the UID faculty and students. So that's a great place to be in Anil. Uh, uh, we know I was standing as a vanguard, not allowing students inside at the AWW because you are going to be houseful. So uh, that, uh, see, and your humble growth, you know, what happens is that when people reflect on their lives, they all start humbly and that uh, hunger in the stomach and the way to explore the world is, I think that's an inspiration for all our students. And that's the way to be, to be an empathy is the second name of design. Yeah. And being humble, being empathetic, and all the time increasing the boundaries in whichever way you can, through research, through reaching out, through networking. And I think you are symptomatic and the an emblem of that. And thank you so very much, Anil. You are quite an inspiration to all of us. At so young an age. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lollipop, everyone likes when they were childhood, but now I think your lollipop design is going to take them <laughs> places. It's good to hear that you still have some sort of e-learning because learning never stops, and we in UID never stop our learning. That's some credo which we have it in our DNA, and that is exemplified by our students. If some webinar takes place at night, ten o'clock, our students are there awake and trying to get through to when nice. it's Surya or something of that sort. So uh, I don't want to say much. You have said enough. You may be tired, but we hope that we all get into normalcy very soon. We would like, we are missing. I shifted to the campus just a few days, a month on 15th, so that I can be at the center to direct things. Thank you so very much, Anil. It is really uh, great, grateful to you. Yeah. And to you, Abhijit, for putting it all together. Yeah. Thank you, Colonel Bose. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so very much, Anil. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. Uh, Srinidhi, would you like to do the honors? Uh, sir, I kind of asked him a question as well. Is it okay if you can answer that one minute question before? You're that taking advantage, Srinidhi. You're taking advantage. <laughs> yeah. no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No problem. <laughs> um, sir, so some of us are planning on applying for our master's. Um, outside right? like so you have done your masters in new zealand right so what kind of a portfolio would they expect from us um yeah basically okay um why do you want to do masters so essentially right now i've done my ug in visual communication i would like to do a masters on interaction design because i want to uh, get a better idea of what the field is right like i don't have enough experience yet i feel so, mm, do you think you should work for at least a year or two before definitely definitely maybe post that but yeah. oh then in that case that will probably give me my experience is that what you say yeah see um um i'll be honest with you i did masters um because um that when i worked for two years after my graduation right um, um, there are a few things that I wanted to learn and uh, the, the university that I went to write, uh, it had its limitations. Um, there was no, no computers and stuff. So everything was handmade. So um, I, I, I had the money, I had the time. So these are the two things the most important. So if you have these two things, then you should definitely do masters. But before doing masters, get the industry experience then you will be able to decide what masters you want to do. So right now you're saying interaction design. I don't even know why you want to do interaction design. So interaction design is not a course that you have to learn for one year. It is, it, it, seriously, it is not uh, like you learn for one year. Take up something that it will add a lot of meaning to it. Okay, like see, interaction design, right, it is a trending one. Okay, uh, Do masters in something that we can carry for the rest, rest of your life. Okay. Do masters in psychology. Do masters in a combination of a design and psychology. Because psychology is something that you will take it for the rest of your interaction is happening now. Tomorrow it might not happen. Data visualization will happen now. Tomorrow it might not happen. But do masters in something that you can apply it in wherever this digital goes. So that could be something completely unrelated to what we are, uh, something unrelated to design, like you said, like psychology or maybe business. You can bring it uh, that 
you have to personally make an attempt or maybe uh, a group of students uh, that you will meet when you go to masters right together you can do some the um, um, some white papers or case studies and stuff to bring the psychology learnings and the design together uh, so me um, when i was reading this book of uh, uh, joseph henry uh, i think joseph henry i don't remember his name so he wrote a book of power of subconscious mind so i was digging little deeper in to understand what is conscious and a subconscious mind and how can i bring that practice into the design so subconscious mind is the one which will uh, trigger you to make decisions because it has some past experience so it goes by what it is seen and all this stuff so i bought some of those practice for uh, brands like um, maggi nestle and all this stuff so uh, i applied it um instead of just putting it my my color theories right um, some some of the buying patterns of people right so we applied all this stuff there and it worked wonders and even with mintra when we designed mintra initially right the uh, here in india people uh, don't buy clothes online so we had to change the mentality of people so um do masters masters is good uh, only if you have money lot of money lot of time because today masters is very expensive so when i did masters i saved money for 2 years then i wo- i worked in saudi arabia one of the most um, notorious places on earth <laughs> but i worked because the money was good and i knew what i wanted that money to go abroad and study so simple thank you so much thank you thank you sir um can i yeah please okay okay so sir uh, first of all really big big thank you from all of us for you know taking the time out for having this talk with us because by far i can tell you this has been one of the most important informative and relevant um, talk for all of us for some of us it has been a really eye opening session and for some others it's been like a reality check that we really needed so um, thanks a lot so thank you for talking to us thank you so much guys and yes. wonderful interacting with you guys and my last visit to uid right uh, what i noticed is i have been to many design colleges i'm, I'm not just saying it but um, there was a bunch of students interacted with me so down to earth and they were giving me a tour of uh, the entire campus and uh, they were so proud of being in the university normally people uh, talk um, <clears throat> not talk so great things about their university but everyone that i met they had something nice to say about the university keep up the good work and uh, i think as up to the management and uh, um, <clears throat> i think that um, what i felt when i started lollipop was there was walls so there was this design uh, experts in this industry and there was design colleges and there was a huge wall so today i think that walls are demolished and we building bridges i think bridges are the one which is required i think every university should build this bridge so when you build the bridge right it becomes easy because we are in the industry learning new things and you are teaching new things there so what if people like me or there's so many people out there can come to your university and talk about a particular topic like it could be as simple as user research or usability testing or rapid prototyping or whatever it is so then it becomes easy you will learn you will explore further and when you come looking for a job right you will know what knowledge or what talent you should carry so um, good work good uh, really nice nice stuff and uh, keep up all the good work and uh, guys this session right uh, i will continue doing such sessions only if i see the outcome so i want to see portfolios of you guys where uh, at least something that i spoke today right if you implement or uh, if you put that in practice right that's when i feel like like sharing more knowledge because i work close to 12 13 14 hours a day and lollipop keeps me so busy and there are five centers that i manage sitting at home now we are applying to open other two centers economic crisis design ah, clients that this nonsense but still we take time to share our knowledge so when you react to it right when you show the stuff it feels very nice and i'll do more sessions like this Okay, thank you so much. And how do I uh, see everyone in one shot? I want to take a. Ah. Uh, saying hi. Is it possible or? Looks quite difficult because it's one of three screens right now. Um, but yeah, you can. I'll. Abrojit, Abrojit, yeah. I want to say something to Anil. Uh, being a portfolio chair of UID, I just want to say thanks to Anil. Yeah, Kakuli, half of your work has got done by Anil. 
<laughs> yes, that's what I want to say. A big thanks for that to Anil. Thank you so much. It's a Thank you. great. I was listening to your thing from 12 o'clock and it was amazing that half of my work because it was very difficult to make them understand that how portfolio is important to get a job or to get a uh, foreign university's admission and all. So it was really great. I need to say about how important, how to describe your work, how to brief, how important the project brief is all about. It's amazing. It's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I hope all the students get a good port. Now you're going to get a good portfolio. And as you said that you want to see, it, hopefully oh. our students will send a good portfolio to you. Oh. Anil, we have Get put Kakoli on the job. We have put uh, Kakoli <laughs> on the job, so don't you worry. <laughs> Thank you so nice. much, sir. Nice, I nice. hope I'll be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you have done. Thank you. Another Thank thing, you. Uh, I think once everything is, um, we are out of the situation, uh, we'll do some batch-wise visit to our studio. So we'll get a couple of um, students coming and uh, spending a day at our studio so where they get exposed to the project the process because we have a user testing lab we have a technology department and we have marketing so they get to talk to everyone and probably have a lunch together with the core team so i'll organize that for you guys yeah thank, thank, you. So thank you thank you thank you that was really wonderful thank you so much Anil. thank you okay thank, thank you everyone please stay safe thank you please stay safe thank you bye please stay safe Thank you, sir.